Hello everyone, today continues with the second installment of the Wonderful Night at the Museum movie series. Call, the hero, defeats the treasure thieves with an army of resurrected men in the museum, eventually winning the admiration of his son, holding a beautiful woman and becoming an overnight success. After many years, Paul quit his job as a museum security guard. He made a small fortune with his little invention and became a successful man. But he knew full well that this was not the life he wanted to live. He doesn't want to be a boss, he still wants to be a security guard. But when he returned to the museum again, he found that it had changed drastically. The manager told him, that with the development of the technological era, the museum is about to upgrade its to zero system in order to keep up with the trend of the times. Those antiques, they're about to be sent to the National Museum for permanent storage. Paul spent his last night with them. Obviously Paul's unannounced departure in the first place pissed them all off. Chris told Paul that since the gold engraving plates will stay in the museum. In other words, tonight is the last night for those antiques that are about to be given away. The next morning, Paul saw his old friends being loaded and pulled away, and there was still some sadness in his heart. Paul's home in bed at night, when he suddenly got a call from Cameron saying, they had been attacked by an Egyptian pharaoh in the National Museum. It turns out that the little monkey stole the tablet and took it to the National Museum. This is bad, you know the National Museum is up and down several floors. How many antiques must be resurrected? but old friends were in danger, and Paul had to help. Under his son's remote control, he snuck into the museum and stole the security guard's magnetic card, and then entered the underground museum without any problem. And just as Paul arrived, just as it was getting dark, Nelson happened to come back to life, and he just wanted to take the golden engraving board and summon the demons from hell, so that he could rule the world, have beautiful women, and go on to the top of his life. Then Paul definitely couldn't say yes, and the two sides engaged in a fight to the death around the engraving board. Either you or me, on the way Paul meets Angela, a female pilot, the first woman in American history, to fly an airplane solo across the Atlantic Ocean, which can also be considered very impressive. To add to the numbers, Nelson assembled a trio of bad guys from the museum, the first sir in Russian history, known as Ivan the Terrible, the first emperor of France, Napoleon, and then there was Capone, the gang leader of Chicago in the 1930s. Nelson grabbed the gold engraving pad without any problems, but when he entered the password, he was prompted with an incorrect password, which was rather embarrassing. Nelson used Cameron to threaten Paul to break his code. You're the main character, so hurry up or your friends will say goodbye to you. Paul takes Angela and finds the finger. He's obsessed with the pretty girl next door, and he's always thinking about how to flirt with her. I guess the only way to do that is to find a wise Einstein. I found several Einsteins. It's a bobble ad, but it's still quite useful. Paul learns the code for the engraving board, which turns out to be Pi. As soon as Paul got the news, the army of the wicked came after him. Nelson managed to get the code to the engraved board, summoning an army of evil spirits from the underground. At the critical moment, the stone statue of Abraham Lincoln appeared, the biggest warrior in the museum, and gave those evil spirit hordes a straight fight back. Then the men Paul called came out of the mountains, and there was an unprecedented battle between the two sides. But in the end, Paul's side had the numerical advantage and gained the final victory. Paul took all the exhibits, returned them to the original museum, and sold his company to donate them to the museum, because he wanted to be a security guard. That's where the story ends. And this movie is still out of this world in terms of brain power. Pour the water in the painting to rehydrate the octopus. Then there is no more water in the painting. The protagonist enters the world in the painting. And so on. Don't talk about logic in this kind of movie. Just watch it and have fun with it. While this video is here, like it don't forget to add a follow you goodbye.